Sam Shoemaker wrote a poem, I Stand by the Door. I liken this poem to being the church. I stand by the door. I neither go too far in nor stay too far out. The door is the most important door in the world. It is the door through which men walk when they find God. There's no use my going way inside and staying there when so many are still outside. And they, as much as I, crave to know where the door is. And all that so many ever find is only the wall where a door ought to be. They creep along the wall like blind men with outstretched groping hands, feeling for a door, knowing there must be a door. Yet they never find it. So I... I stand by the door. The most tremendous thing in the world is for men to find that door, the door that leads to God. The most important thing any man can do is to take hold of one of those blind groping hands and put it on the latch, the latch that only clicks and opens to the man's own hand. Men die outside that door as starving beggars die on cold nights in cruel cities in the dead of winter. They die for want of what is within their grasp. They live on the other side of that door. They live to find it. Nothing else matters compared to helping them find the door and open it and walk in it and find him. So I stand by the door. Go in, go in, great saints, go all the way in. Go way down into the cavernous cellars and way up into the spacious attics, into the vast roomy house, this house where God is. Go into the deepest of hidden casements of withdrawal, of silence, of sainthood. Some must inhabit those inner rooms and know the depths and the heights of God and then call outside to the rest of us how wonderful it is inside. Sometimes I take a deeper look in. Sometimes I venture a little farther in, but my place seems to be a little closer to the opening. So I stand by the door. The people too far in do not see how near some are to leaving. Those too far in seem preoccupied with the wonder of it all. Somebody must watch for those who have just entered the door but would like to run away. So for them too, I stand by the door. I admire the people who go way in, but I wish, I wish they would not forget how it was before they got in then they would be able to help the people who have not even found the door or the people who want to run away again from God. You can go too deeply in and you can stay too long and you can forget the people outside the door. As for me, I shall take my old accustomed place near enough to God to hear him and know he is there but not so far from men as not to hear them. And remember, they are there too. Where? Outside the door. Thousands of them, millions of them, billions of them. But more important for me, one of them, two of them, ten of them, whose hands I am intended to put on the latch. So, I shall stand by the door and wait for those who seek it. I had rather be a doorkeeper. So, I stand by the door.
mornings and welcome to the Friday Morning Nameless. I'm Chad the Alcoholic and do I have a show for you. This might just be the greatest show that ever happened in all of this ch channel's history or even YouTube history ever. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is we got one Lutheran, supposedly, and two Catholics. So Suppos I'm probably... Supposedly. <laughs> and, right, right. and so we got ourselves a, a meandering show. Now, typically on the meandering show, I'd be out in the garage smoking some cigarettes and shooting the chit with uh, Neil down there. But since uh, it's Zelzin's first time uh, on the channel, I always like to wear the old nice suit to welcome you, sir. I, I, I feel I feel welcomed. I'm, I'm excited. I got the denim. So also, that's all I have. Um, so I have this, but, you know, my daily garb is a, uh, it's a, it's a coverall, denim coveralls, and they are very good for a tile setter. So. Uh, I, I I approve just for the record. Just wonderful. for the record. Yes. So I I am so grateful that you decided to join us. Um I thought that you'd be a really good uh addition to this conversation. I've heard your conversation with uh Pete from Strange Theology as well as numerous Christian Baxter. Yep, Christian yeah, Baxter. That was, fun. that was fun, yeah. That was a good one. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Numerous conversations with the uh, ever famous uh, Grim Griswold Grimm, uh, Hail the General, as well as Paul Vanderclay. So I've, I'm very excited. We've exchanged a couple of uh, uh, emails. You've read one of my poems, and I just think you're a cool cat. There's so many topics I'd love to talk with you about, as far as you know, uh, poetry and music and film. Um, but this particular topic this morning, I was uh, listening to. Um, uh, the John Verveke and Jordan Hall conversation. And right near the end of that conversation, there was this thing that Jordan Hall said that I really understood and that I felt was very important. And I was inspired to ask Neil because I was going to take the night off, but I'm kind of a glutton for punishment. So, yeah. so I, 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 I asked Neil, hey, we should get this show going tonight. And you are one of the gentlemen that was invited. So, um, do you have anything you'd like to say right off the bat? No, let's jump in, man. I, I want. I'm, okay. I'm looking forward to this. So, a lot of the topic is um, now. All of you who are watching, if you are paying attention, I already played the in the intro is this poem called "I Stand by the Door," uh, that was written by an Episcopalian preacher uh, in the 19 probably 1920s or 1930s. He was uh, a preacher in the Oxford group movement, and he was also um, a very close spiritual advisor to a gentleman named Bill Wilson, who was the basically the co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. And so a lot of it, um, Bill's spiritual formation came from this guy, as well as uh, later on a, a gentleman named Father Ed Dowling, who was a Jesuit priest from St. Louis, and he, so Bill had a lot of um, spiritual formation from a lot of different um, people, primarily Christians uh, and Christians of many different backgrounds. So that's very interesting. Um, and this is also uh, a big part of my shaping uh, in, my, in my spiritual life is just being op having an open mind to um, spiritual, uh, I don't know, spiritual topics as such. And so I'm kind of a wild one. Uh, like I said, I, I would say that if I would identify as um, uh, in, in like a like very cautious way, uh, a Christian, only because I'm like a terrible Christian. But other than that, I would say that I'm a I'm a mere Christian who has membership at a Lutheran church. Aspiring. Maybe the word aspiring is good. Well, sometimes I think, why the hell aren't I Catholic, to be quite honest with you? But, you know, um, my wife said that I probably would be disciplined enough, and she was raised Catholic. So. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, also, hashtag wives are the best. This is one thing that I've really been noticing a lot. In a lot of the conversations, wives are so vital to many of our uh our lives, a lot of the folks that I hear talking, and they're a big piece of the puzzle. So, all right, I'm going to 
us play on this little clip here. This is the clip from the John Verbeke show, and we'll see where we go from here. Let's Great. see if I can get re-inspired, because I kind of forgot what he said already. But how do you think being a Christian in the way that you've described, a non-rivalrous Christian that is oriented towards a religio to pure relationality that uh, is um, expressed in love and light and logos and life, if, if I can be so bold, how how do you see that addressing the meta crisis? Mm, right. Okay, right. And, That's and, good. And, That's good. Let me throw yeah. one else. In. Let me throw something else in too. Sure. And maybe I'm, almost, I'm almost like a cross, like a diagonal. But you mentioned fellowship, and interestingly, I found myself having an experience over the past two weeks that I've been calling the fellowship of the spirit. Um. And I mean this in terms of actual specific individuals. Like, huh, I'm beginning to notice that perhaps you're a member of this thing, and I'm calling it the fellowship of the Spirit. And, it, and it's obviously, as a component of the fellowship of the Spirit, is relationality at the level of dialogos. But another piece, another tone, is we're calling each other home. Yes, I think right. that's right. That's well said. And, and, and it, and I'll put a, I'll put a piece out there that comes like a little bit more of the Chevelle record, the no man left behind. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And which is a deep, deep commitment because some people are committed to not coming home. Um, but our, our love is great enough that we will find a way to reach out to them and we will bring them home. That's excellent. So that's the clip. And, you know, well, I'll just get your guys' first impressions on this. Well, I was struck originally just right off the bat, this Jordan invokes this notion of a non-rivalrous Christianity. And I'm not entirely sure what he means by that, but it, it definitely resonates with me. Um, it definitely resonates with kind of what we do here folks like us um you know you you foregrounded the conversation chad you know with you know i you know i'm with one lutheran and and two roman catholics and you know i'm amazed at how little that matters to me now versus the way maybe 10 years ago I probably still wouldn't have said anything, but I would have harbored some sort of snarky, you know, zingers uh, that I just sort of swallow. Um, and not anymore. Like, I, that's just not at all what animates me, you know, at all. So um, I don't know. How do you take him to mean this sort of non non rivalrous Christianity? Um, I think I think when earlier in the clip, because uh, it's been I don't know like twelve hours since I watched it, but it was something to do with um, um, uh, like 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 how how can you be how can you say that you um, you uh, are are Christian if you want to close the doors on others or something like this or mm -hmm. you know because like he even went out as far as this call like he said he felt that uh, 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 Verveke was very much a Christian and and that mm -hmm. you know and the, and the fact that like he won't call himself one is kind of like makes him one or something something to that effect mm -hmm. I don't want to put words in his mouth if you guys I'll put the link in the in the bit in the description that way you can watch it. Yeah. That's near the end. And the, the end piece of that whole conversation was the best for me because it was the most salient pieces that were like, psh, 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 psh. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's, it's, I think it's actually what you said. It's what we're doing. I think it's what we've been doing in, in like the, uh, in this online space called this little corner of the internet mm -hmm. for, for a few years now. And I mean, we, everybody has their own little, you know, their own little things that they are really, really don't you know they, they're not gonna budge on but it doesn't prevent us from from having a fellowship and this that's what stood out to me was the fellowship mm -hmm. 
spirit. Yeah, I really, I really like that too. And I guess that's kind, of, yeah, that's where I'm, that's what I'm getting at. You know, the, the, you know, I think there's a real temptation to sort of double down on on distinctives, right? And to um, exclude, I guess, is what you're talking about. Um, you know, you're either on the team or you're not on the team. And you know, I know part of my migration over to this little corner was sort of. I was very tempted. I think I just said this, but I was very tempted to double down on all the distinctives, right? And um, but something finally didn't sit well with me because if I were to take that seriously, I would have to cut people out that I knew to be genuine lovers of Christ, you know, and, and so part of that, you know, you know, my friendship with Rod, you know, my work with Rod, um, but also part of that is that I know my own path to adult Christianity was through my evangelical friends. And, you know, I, I lived out in Los Angeles and I had a, a ton of Presbyterian and mega church and non mega church Protestant friends who, you know, whatever differences we may have had about this, that, and the other, like, I, I didn't question one second, you know, that they were real um, and they believed in Jesus. And that just, when I, re when I reminded myself that if I were going to double down on, on the, the sort of the, the commitments, you know, you know, there's this thing in, in, in old school Catholicism, you know, no salvation outside of the Catholic church. And, you know, like that was a big, that's a big thing amongst the trads. Right. And, 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 and I just remember challenging myself, like, do I really think, you know, that Paul Vanderclay is like going to hell? Like, <laughs> really? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's absurd. Like, that's absurd. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, and, and maybe I'm like, have destroyed all credibility um, amongst, you know, uh, the, the the Catholics, I just and, and the answer is no. You know, well, like, my, like go ahead, Neil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mind goes to my childhood, the cranberries, zombie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thir okay. Thirty years ago, we were killing each other. Yeah. You know, thirty right. years ago, and right. now what you're saying, and I agree with it completely. That that let's say Catholic Lutheran divide is yeah. less meaningful to me than. I and and what's weird about it to me is that it and and I've mentioned this in a few other things. I go back to the litmus test of does it increase is what is what we're doing here decreasing or increasing my faith, strengthening my faith right, in, right, in Christ right. or or weakening it. And I to I would say the fact that we're able to find this glue and mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, agape mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it, is only strengthening. It, it's sort of like we're, we're testing to see, oh, is there a universal truth, a universal love, a universal connection? And we're finding that maybe there, there in fact is, and we're finding in our social reality, let's say that those things are able to transcend our, our differences and, and transcend and unite, I would say. Right, right, right. Um, right. And yeah. <clears throat> well, um, so, so yeah, I mean, I, so, so a lot of things are going through my mind right now. There's, um, and you'll have to forgive me, Kale. Sometimes I'm just kind of all over the place, but I was thinking of, um, so there's a lot of, like, since I've been around the corner, there's been a lot of talk about the East and the West. And mm -hmm. this concept um, uh, kind of hit me between the eyes about a week ago. This, this idea of, oh, we're not, we're, this is no longer East-West thing. We're actually... Um, we're actually in like middle, we have middle earth theology. Yeah, that's interesting. That's and, really interesting. And, but I don't know what that means though, because I didn't re read any Tolkien. So my wife loves Tolkien. But if that's true, uh, what, how might that be? How might that be the case? Because, like, here's another, here, I'll give you some more background, another background on my thinking a lot of this stuff. Have you, have you ever read um, uh, A Hiding Place, the Cory Temboom? 
Behind I'm not. I, I think I'm I'm familiar with it, but but go ahead, please. There's, there's a portion in this book where, um, where so there's these fleas, and you know, and they're like, uh, bo- they're like bothering everybody, and um, but. And, and then Corey, Corey's this, uh, she's like in her fifties and, or something like this. And she has a sister who's also there, who's older than her. And she's like this saint. And she tells her, you know, uh, I think her name is Betsy. I can't remember her name, but she tells Corey, be thankful for everything. Mm-hmm. And even the fleas. And mm-hmm. she's like, mm-hmm. the fleas, are you insane? Mm-hmm. The fleas. Mm-hmm. Well, somehow they ended up, um, smuggling a Bible, somebody was able to smuggle a Bible into the basement of this this um, uh, concentration camp called Ravenbrook, <clears throat> Ravensbrook. And every night in that basement, there'd be Jewish, Protestant, Orthodox, and Catholic um, believers who would all be worshiping together mm-hmm. in that in the basement of that church. And not once were they complaining or or toiling about this rivalry let's say and it was all due to the fleas mm. because <laughs> the nazis didn't want to go down there because the fleas were so disgusting yeah. now like i just think about that and i'm like yeah. does it really take that you know for us to be able to 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 love and even take it a step further you know like aa has taught me something like this extreme concept which I haven't had to necessarily put it to put it to uh, practice yet. But like, if somebody like you know, you know, Stalin or Mao or or like Jeffrey Dahmer comes into the room of Alcoholics Anonymous and says, "I'm suffering from alcoholism," yeah. will you help me? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to say yes, yeah, and set aside what I think I believe about this person. Because they ask for help, and that's that's this principle, you know, and um, and that's you know that's extreme in some sense. But I mean, maybe I'm being a little sentimental here, but I think that's what we're doing here. And, and so, so this thing that he talks about, this fellowship, and then this no man left behind is what he said. Mm-hmm. I like that bit a lot, and um, yeah, so. Right, because, yeah, because you know the what is the you know the old quip, you know, is that you know there there are no atheists in the foxholes, and it's almost like that there are no denominations uh, in foxholes. You know, there's a sort of a corollary there because you know, like you know, the kinds of conversations that we are allowed to have here, and I think all of us have 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 felt genuinely fed by. Um, you know, I can't, you know, just like roll into the office and have these kind of conversations. Right. (laughs) And, and, and so, uh, those of us who have migrated to this place have found this fellowship, you know, that, that, uh, that, that, uh, Jordan Hall talked about what he called it. I think the fellowship of the spirit or something like that. Um, now, you know, as, as a student of history, I get a little bit nervous about these kinds of things because there's, there are these old traditions in which people have like absolutely lost their minds and gone crazy and gotten into sort of the millenarian spirit. But, but I, I take Jordan for, for at, at, at his, at his word here. I think this is, a, it's a real thing. And um, we feel that spirit amongst us. You know, it's like, I had a conversation earlier today with somebody who I knew. So I, I actually knew him first outside of, you know, the corner and, Anyway, so he wanted to 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 record a show, and I said, "Sure, yeah, like, like let's do it." You know, I knew that he had been sort of wanting to get back into things. I said, "Sure, like let's go," and so we were talking about it, and, and like three fourths of the way through the conversation, I mentioned PVK, and I said, "Are you familiar with the the the, the, the corner?" He's like, "Oh man, PVK all the time." Like, and I, I had no idea, you know, that 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 he. I mean, I. I already had I had felt a kinship with him already, which is why I agreed to go on the show with him. Um, but the fact that here's this guy, like I don't even know if you know if he's like a known entity out in TLC land. But but you know there was immediately like I, it's like I was comfortable and sharing with him, you know, in, in in this sort of this back and forth together in a way that 
that I knew before I knew he was a member, like he was an honorary member of the core, even if he didn't know it, because he uh, was, there, there's a, a high degree of openness, like taking the spirit seriously, like all the kind of things that, that we, we talk about. And, 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 and so, so, so this no, no man left behind thing. Um, did you notice that it really like struck for Vakey? Like he was sort of, you know, yeah. R really like i think yeah. even sort of physically like whoa Gr you know grim's gonna have a field day with the body language if you okay on that yeah one. yeah okay yeah, yeah that, that's right because um i don't i'm not sure that verveke was expecting that answer from jordan yeah so, when I, I, so it came into the corner a long time ago i was asking because i was curious you know i've, I've always so I wasn't raised Christian, uh, and and I always had like this this um, kind of culturally imposed resentment, I guess, or cultural influence of resentment you know, about what the Christians did, and um, and you know, but as I as I started to mature a little more, because like my my conversion is only a couple a few years old now. Um, and um what but one of the questions i was asking early on in like on the discord was like you know as as we as christians like what can we do today or where did we go wrong in the past that that got us into the position that we're in today because i don't think it was i don't think it's just an outside thing that happened like this what didn't just come crushing the the christian a community like a lot of it is brought about from like like this idea of you can't destroy it from the outside it can only be destroyed from the inside out mm -hmm. and a lot of people were like well let's not focus on the bad things that we did let's focus on the good things we did and it's like mm -hmm. well i so, mean so here so here's the shift that i think happened is that once you have a culture where all cultural pressure is on attending church dressing nicely for mass um saying the right things socializing in the right way because if you do all these things then you're a pillar of your community and you get business and your family respects you and you you climb the the ladder the hierarchy of life right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so that that's all wonderful and self-reinforcing the problem becomes when and and this is really what we're seeing now and and kale i'm interested in your take on this because mm -hmm. my my take on it is increasingly the case that the people in the pews are there because they genuinely want to be there. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to score social status points. They're not trying to impress. Sometimes, sometimes there's family, sometimes there's family reasons sure. that they're there. Um, but it's increasingly the case that all the social pressures are, let's say at the very least neutral in regard to someone practicing their faith and, and, uh, and so I do see a smaller church and I do see us in the wilderness for some time but I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. And I susp I think Pope Benedict saw the same thing. You probably know more about the, that. Than yeah, that. he did. I mean, he made the call literally all the way back in 1958. So, you know, that, that is a long, you know, talk about making an early call that um, has proven to be, you know, I would say prophetic in Prescient. some very, very real way. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so it's interesting. So I live in um, in a blue state. And, you know, you live in a red state and Chad, you live in like a hybrid state. Wouldn't you say that Wisconsin is uh, purple? Yeah. Yeah. Ish. You know, it, um, from my point of view, it looks more red than blue. But for some reason, blue one, I don't believe it. But yes. Yeah. yeah. So so I am, you know, of, of the three of us, I live in the area that is most, you know, I would say hostile you know negative world to use aaron wren's taxonomy which i think is very helpful you know neil you still live in a world where you know you know you can you can still like there are parts of your world where being a church going member in the archdiocese brings with it a certain amount of status so so what's what's interesting is i have status as a result of my involvement in the higher generation, the, the right. older generation has right. bestowed that status on me. Right. But among people of my generation, that's right. Among okay, people that's of my generation yeah. and, and the younger generation that's coming after me among themselves, they have zero status gained by participating. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. That, that, that makes sense. So, so I, I think that, you know, we just sort of a certain amount of local variation, I think is important to point out um, with, with all this, but I, I agree. I think that, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the, the old guy in the group here, you know, at clocking in at 52, 51, 51. How old am I? 52. And um, (laughs) man, I'm getting old. Uh, You know, I would say that that everyone be- below me in, in age wise is um I'm 51 by the way. Um everyone below me understands that they will get zero status for being an upstanding member of the church. So no, I I, I take your point Neil. I think that's that's that that that's an important thing to point out. So therefore, um yeah, you know that that it's then the church is going to sort of select for people who either don't give a rip about status um, or uh, in terms of their own personal hierarchy, they recognize that status seeking is not the point, right? That, that, you know, the, the only status that I care about is like Jesus status, right? I want, I want, I want the Lord to know, I want to be counted in that number to sort of rip on, you know, when the saints go marching in. Right. So, um, but that makes us increasingly strange and weird and, and, um, I think, therefore, we, you know, there's a certain, uh, these kinds of d- d- propositional distinctions become really silly, um, you know, when, you know, there's a much bigger battery of guns pointed in your general direction. Um, you know, there's a, there's a Yiddish word for, you know, concentrating on or focusing on excessively small little areas of distinction and missing the larger picture. And it's, I think it's, I think the way you pronounce it, it's pill pool, P-I-L-P-U-L. And I think that those of us in the corner recognize that pill pool is a distraction from the bigger things. But what is interesting is that it's, it has not been used as an excuse for those of us here to not care about big questions. In fact, it sort of has freed us up in some weird way to care about way bigger um, questions, at least from my way of thinking, than, you know, um, particular conceptions of sacramentality or, you know, what all those sorts of things that, look, if you really push me, I'll, I'll, I'll render an opinion for you. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, I'm friends with 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 y'all here and you know with others in the corner not because of the correct take on I don't know um the a catechism question but whether you think that we are um it, transitioning out of the iron box of modernism or you know something like that some of the sort of the you know the big picture things that we we tend to chew, chew over in this talky thinky talky space I think that's yeah. how you call it yeah and, you know, I also kind of think what's interesting is, um, like, it, like maybe at one point it would be like, um, uh, my, what is it, my, uh, my friend's enemy is a friend yeah. of me. something like that, like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna um, unite because we have a common enemy. And I don't think that's the case. I, I don't yeah, get the- I agree. I agree with you. What, get, what, what what distinction are you making then, Chad? I I think I'm following, but I want to tease well, it out of you. Like I don't think most of us in the in the that who are participating at this level are participate are joining because we have like we're going to set aside our differences so that we can defeat a common enemy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it's what, more like like no, we're each of us are secure where we're sitting Mm -hmm. we have questions we're Mm -hmm. open to things we're also closed to things Mm -hmm. um but like this like it's it's not a common enemy but a common victory that Mm. that bonds us and or like i don't know how to well well, let's maybe it's related to what jordan hall said said the second part we're also calling each other home mm-hmm. I, I really like that we're also calling each other home you ever see the simpsons kale of mm. the protestant heaven and the catholic yeah, yeah. heaven Classic. you ever so see good. that contract oh, yeah. yeah perfect yeah, yeah. yeah like like obviously that's, <laughs> if that's a thing god i apologize and i right, find right. that hilarious if that's a thing but i seriously have my doubts that that's a thing <laughs> yeah yeah no totally, it's, it's like totally. when, when well when christ says like 
you know, your distinctions as male and female aren't going to matter. It's like, we, we have no idea of the distinctions that are going to matter versus, I, th I think we can say that sin matters. I think we can right. say that right. with, with, with very strong certainty. However, right. we can right. also say with very strong certainty that forgiveness and grace matter tremendously, but like, mm -hmm. you know, so I said this to Chad one day where I said, every time uh, PVK talks about uh, what is it? Total depravity yeah. or something like yeah. I, I cannot separate that from John St. John uh, Paul's uh, uh, teaching on the primacy of grace. Like yeah. that just sounds like primacy of grace to me. Yeah. 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 yeah and so it's so, so much of this, like how much of our like friction points are just like just different language, right? That, that sort of gets lost in, in those kind of confusions. And that, you know, you know, to me, you know, the, the, the grace of my adult life has been to spend a lot of time outside of Catholic bubbles. Now I've lived at this sort of Catholic boarding school for the last, you know, number of years, but I mean, just, I've, I've, re, you know, I've, I've had a deep experience with evangelical Christians, you know, I have deep experiences with, you know, nuns n-o-n-e-s's you know and and with now with eastern orthodox folks and so like to me that has proven that all these things that i thought i cared about when i was 20 and was all about those distinctions and all about waging apologetics wars and and, and whatnot I, I just realized that that in the foxhole in the bunker thing and again i know what you mean chad i know it's not just because you know but but in in this this other thing like none of that matters you know, not, not in any real way because because it it foregrounds um, you know bullet points over you know relationships and yeah. right? to, how, how did you come to this realization like the softening how does your heart get softened would you say mm, good question um, you know in one way sin uh, you know me uh, me screwing up um, you know that you know when you when you live a life. You know, when you live a life and you sin spectacularly, there's a way in which, oh, and, and when, when you, when you sin spectacularly and it has been like an unconscious endeavor on your part you emerge on the other side of having done something spectacularly bad thinking to yourself holy crap like how did i do that i didn't think i would ever do that like i'm a smart person like i'm a together person i'm basically a good person like oh my god i was behaving in like really depraved ways and i was fooling myself you know and so you find yourself on the other side of that and you're like well what else do i not know i mean i thought i knew myself yet this this these these series of things that i've done are you know completely disprove a kind of theory of mind which suggests that you're in control well then what else what else is there and so for me my my 20s were really humbling my you know 20s into my late 20s were really humbling to me when i recognized that you know no amount of having the correct catechism kept me from being a piece of garbage you know it'd be <laughs> like not just like passively bad but like actively bad yeah that that you know that that was that was humbling and yeah so for, for for me it was grappling with like if i if i really believe this <laughs> yeah like like so when i had a conversion experience kale mm -hmm. I, like i had a crazy and, and when i was kind of i'll say coming to christ like yeah just the craziness of things like love your enemies yeah and all like and that means all the way like the craziness of what that really means yeah it's radical and, um <laughs> it it it, it, uh, it the, for the foolishness of God is greater than the wisdom of men. That was the epistle reading this mm -hmm. past week. And that mm -hmm. man, it's, mm. it's, it's stuff like that. Um, and it's anyway. And, right. um, it, 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 and, and isn't yeah, it ahead. interesting how like, even like that, that, that passage, it's so interesting to me that, you know, you can hear that whatever 50, 50 times before. And then all of a sudden, you know, either you do something or something happens to you. <laughs> and then like, you hear it again, you're like, what? what how, you know how have i heard that 50 times it's the same bloody words it's the same thing and then all of a sudden 
here I I've am. I've only heard it three or four times, but yeah, you're older. You I. know, but, but you're right. So I'm the old guy, you know, but, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh my, that nailed it there. You know, <laughs> well, that's pretty good. God, like what else you got? Cause that man, you know, uh, well, so, so for me, it was, it was a continuing series of man. What else do I know? What else don't I know? What else don't I know? And so, so, so Chad, I guess to answer your question is that that really defanged a lot of, you know, it's some, you know, what can you have a puppy and they have those like really razor sharp baby teeth. It's like when you get older, like you go, you know, those adult teeth come in and they're, they're not as sharp, you know, but they're, 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 they're stronger, right? You know, they're, 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 they're more, um, designed to do the task of just you know, like eating day in and day out. Yeah. You know, nothing. So I don't know. I, for me, it, it is, it has worn down those edges. Um, and therefore, even when I'm fairly convinced of, of what's right and true, and like everybody knows me, know that I'm not shy about saying what I think is true. Um, I still, uh, have, you know, I've, I haven't forsaken the mercy of God that I experienced uh, on the other side of having, you know, messed up spectacularly. Um, I take that with me. Um, and therefore all the more reason why I take those, those things seriously. Um, you know, so I mean, that's a function of age and wisdom. Um, and, you know, humility is self-knowledge, right? So I don't know I, to that, that, and then having to kind of remember like, oh, actually I know, th I know things. Like, you know, I, like, you know, I, I, well, you're, you're, I feel like you're sort of remembering that role in the corner. Um, and hmm. you know, you, you, you do have that, that status as, Hey, this is a guy who not only has been through the trenches with us, hmm. but he also has, let's say the education, but, but also the wisdom to back it up. So, so don't mess it up, Kale. Don't mess it up. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, 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 no pressure. Yeah. I, yeah, one of my one of my really good friends um, that I first met, you know, online, and we've since met each other, and we're, we're we're buds now. You know, he will occasionally just sort of look at me like, "Hey, like you're weird, man." I, I go, you know, he's like, and, and I, what are you talking about? Because like I just I walk around my day feeling like pretty normal, like you know, a little bit, you know, above average intelligence. He's like, "No, you like like know things that." And I just, I lose, I just don't, that doesn't, because I forget stuff all the time, right? It's not like I'm like super automatic recall guy. Um, and, you know, I, I know what I got on the SAT and it was like, certainly not going to get me into fancy colleges, that's for sure. Um, so, but, but I do, I read a ton and, and, and I think, I think when you have to get in front of, you know, 15, 20 kids at a pop, uh, you know, several times a day for big chunks of your, your, your year, I, you know, I, I, I should probably trust that a little bit more. Like I've had to, you know, it's not like they're firing their guns at me all day long, but just, you know, I, 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 I want to, I want to witness to them. Right. You know, uh, and, and, you know, yeah. So I probably should remember that. I, uh, that, that that's true about me. Um, Sorry, I went off on a tangent there. So. Well, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. like you said, well, I know what my SAT was, and it's not going to get me into a big college, but you have a different kind of accreditation, which is called wisdom. Mm. You can share with people who are coming up who can get into bigger colleges. Mm. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, like this is, I kind of say the same thing. Like, I don't have children. Like, we're trying, but if I mm. don't, I'm... I'm a part of a of a of a tradition in Alcoholics Anonymous where I help I help husbands. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And I help yeah. husbands who have children, and that yeah. I take that very seriously. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the legacy question is, is 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 absolutely an animating thing for us. You mm -hmm. know that that I mean, why are we bothering talking about this? Because I think we know that, like, it actually is really important. You know, like civilization matters and, 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 and it's easy to forget that. Right. So I think that's right, Chad, you know, that, that, that what has been given to you can't be kept with you. Right. That, so there's the spirit of the gift, right. That, that what's, what's so interesting to me, there's a great book by this guy named Lewis Hyde and he's a, a kind of a, a non-institutional academic guy. Anyway, he wrote, he wrote this book called the gift and he talks about the difference between the gift economy and the market economy. And the, the gift economy, which is, you know, 
Christianity operates, um, you know, in the gift economy, right? Because we we got the thing that we didn't deserve and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? But it's not a gift if you keep it, right? That there's something about the gift itself that that you are a custodian to it, for it, by it, but that it, it only fulfills its magic my word here lewis hyde doesn't use that word but it fulfills its magic by being taken and then being received and being passed on like it's like this you know it, you know it's it's and it's so important in that and that human flourishing human societies must adopt the spirit of the gift or it becomes you know nasty brutish short you know um and and maybe that's what we are witnessing right now right you know you could talk about it in like neoliberalism terms or like marxist terms or you know, you know all these sort of different economic ways of kind of looking at the thing but at the end of the day what i think all of us are experiencing is that is the the impoverishment of the gift economy right that somebody's holding on to something or or, or acquiring something and not passing it on and that is true of of you know houses it's true of education it's true of of the faith it's true of like all of these kinds of things and and maybe that's what we know so you know you look at and look look at all the hand wringing that that um um pvk does over like his channel and like making money and, and all these kinds of things and i really I, I cannot tell you how much i admire paul for wrestling with those things out loud because um, and, 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 and look, I, I have my differences. I think Paul should do more, frankly, um, because he's the real deal. And he, and I believe that, uh, that, uh, a laborer is worth his, um, his hire. Um, you know, you know, this Chad, cause you have to hire yourself out all the time and, you know, you're good at what you do and, and, you know, you're worth it. Right. So, you know, so, you know, and this is something that I struggle with, you know, it's, it's like, okay, well, like, what does it mean that I'm worth it? Does that mean, like, I don't, you know, it just like gets into these sort of uncomfortable um, territories. But but, but what I think Paul is wrestling with is that, you know, we know this from the Gospels and we know this from the Acts of the Apostles and we know this from the letters that, like, when you charge for the Gospel, something is afoot, right? You know, th this, is, this is charlatan space, you know? And so what's that line, I think, is a real question. But, it, but if it's not characterized by you know the spirit of the gift then you know it's probably time to poke around a little bit more and ask some 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 heart questions two things on that first i've said this a while ago and i'll say it again pbk should just make a book or somebody should do this for paul whoever's got skills out there you should do this make a book and say this is my first book and only my mom has read it. That should be the title of it or something like this. <clears throat> and then when you open the book, there's nothing in it but like a notebook. And just then he can get all the proceeds. That way he doesn't have to write the damn book, which he should write the book. But That's right. That's right. But the second thing is is um, if you do want to give money, just go right in the link below. We have a, we have a couple of uh, links for where you can give, give some money and uh, be very happy uh, for you to give some money. Thirdly, this this principle actually, I just a buddy of mine just passed me um, "No Man Is an Island" by Merton, and mm -hmm. the first chapter is this principle of you can't keep it unless you give it away, yeah. right? And like this is AA's had this principle. It's right in the literature. It says you know you can't keep your sobriety unless you give it away, yeah. and I actually think that this principle works both sides of the scale. So it's like if you want to keep sorrow. Just mm -hmm. give it, and so that I think is actually some sort of a some strange principle that works no matter what. Yeah, and no, I think you might be right, yeah, and it works positively and negatively. I think that's right. I think that's right. And you could well, there, you could, well, there's a there's a difference between sorrow and let's say resentment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because because I I think of um, blessed are those who mourn for they will be yeah, comforted. Yeah. There's a way in which well, but I I think I get what you're saying, Chad. That. You become a reflection and i think of resist not evil the same way in that mm. whatever you're resisting you're having a relationship with that thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then inevitably you become two sides of the same coin of whatever you're having a relationship with so yes it's, it's the same principle though you know and so there, there's this other thing though too which i think as you were talking um uh I, and it's something i've been railing on for a while this idea of mercy over sacrifice 
Uh, now they shouldn't be probably detached because I'm very much about the idea of, of, of uh, sacrifice. Like, and I, I listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that as a humble person. I have a very lack, a huge lack of humility. This is why I need to do these things. So mm -hmm. like, I believe like you'll be humbled uh, unless you take the humbling action, you will be humbled. Like I, mm -hmm. I really, yeah. so, um, in, in all, better to cooperate with it rather than to be undone by it or something like that. Right, right. And so, like, a lot of that can be conflated with works. All that I don't really give a shit. All I know is my experience is this: if I don't, if I don't um, take these actions, you know, like I want, you know, I could be having, I can have everything in the world and be feeling like, why the hell do I feel like I want to end it? You know, like that's just kind of how I am. You know, mm -hmm. so mercy though. <clears throat> I think is is at the core of of the topic here that um, that uh, Jordan Hall is talking about is the core of what you're talking about, and I'm wondering why it's it's as if we as you were talking, the sentence came to mind, and tell me if this is wrong. Mercy shouldn't be monopolized by Christ alone. So obviously, you know the mercy that we that we show others is because because he first showed us, but yeah. still, you know, like, can we not remember those types of things, especially with like, not only just like the, the Christian brothers and sisters that we have, but like the people who maybe will never proclaim their, like a Christian faith, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, and, and like, we, we all also often talk about these things. We completely for like negate the whole timeline. Oh, he's like, we'll do this with like big, big name figures like say peterson right like you know it's like who are you to say and how i mean what about like next year or like maybe even five years ago already who knows and there's or a or, or, or or maybe on his deathbed i mean you know i mean all right right you know i think you know i i think it's probably best for folks to recognize that you know number one like we don't really know um you know, and, and therefore mercy is, um, a pretty darn good default. <laughs> um, you know, um, it's a pretty good darn place to operate from, you know, I, what is the, the parable where the, where the, the guy is called before the king and and he pleads for mercy and, and the king's like, okay, yeah, all right, you know. And then he walks out and he runs into a guy who owes him money and then you know <laughs> comes after him and says, you know, you know, no mercy, you know, and and of course, you know, he gets found out and you know gets his comeuppance. And you know, what did that guy think he got from the Lord? <laughs> I mean, did he did he did he believe he sort of pulled a fast one? Can let me ask you this question, Kale. Mm. The parable of the workers in the vineyard, where they all get a denarius at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the true reward is the 12 hours they had to work in the garden or the six hours that they had to work in the garden. What what do you think of that? Yeah, you know, you, you know, man, that that talk about a Rorschach test, right? Um, um that's what the parables are so powerful, you know. Um Right, because if if you if you if you scale it, right, if if I'm looking at it the way that you're framing it here, Neil, you know, the working in the garden, in the vineyard here. Sorry, the working in the vineyard is participating in that which you were destined for, and the person who doesn't get there until, you know, 15 minutes before the day is done and still gets his denaria, denari, denari, um, you know, he gets it, like he's there, like he, he's on board, but he only got a chance to do it for 15 hours or 15 minutes, you know? And I mean, if you've ever done something, you truly felt like you were supposed to be doing. And I hope everybody gets that experience. I mean, for me, and I know I've said this before, but for me, it's like I'm in I'm in the classroom and we're reading Macbeth and 
I'm on and the kids are on and we're working on this thing together and they're seeing things and I'm seeing things. And it's like, I am looking, I'm staring at that clock and I'm like, don't you dare go off. Don't th that by do not, we don't, you don't, I, you know, and, and then this sort of like this urgency picks up and you're like, and then, and then the bell goes off, right? Cause time is time. And, and, and I know that that's a foretaste of heaven. And it sounds weird because like, what do you mean teaching Beth? Like, but it is right. And, and that, you know, I'd take 15 minutes, but man, if you give me, if you give me 10 hours, oh man. Oh yeah. You know, absolutely. It's like, it's why I think something is, is, as as silly as surfing is such a powerful, um, metaphor and i think that's why anybody who surfs is like they you know they, they talk about it and it's like you know fine but you know if you can catch the wave and you can be sort of in that flow state why wouldn't you want it to be for 15 hours 15 minutes is great an hour it's that much better right so so um yeah whereas so so then but how do most people hear the hear the parable neil i get how most people hear it but actually where where you're taking this is where I want to take this in regard to the present moment, Ky mm. the Kairos moment, mm. in that it, it feels mm. to me that the, the default setting is to bemoan the shrink and the decline of the once great institutions and everything we loved and the glory. And it's like, mm. no, 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 mm -hmm. don't you get it? Mm. We, we are here now mm -hmm. in this time, in this place. Like God has given here now. Mm. Like the moment is here. The opera. Uh, uh, so so like we, 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 yeah. we really struggle with this, don't we, Neil? I mean, we really do, right? And, you know, so when I teach poetry, um, like a, what, a poetry unit or whatever, you know, um, we talk about, or I talk about, you know, uh, and none of this is original to me. So please, you know, my, all my teachers are properly footnoted. It's not, it's not my idea. I'm just a, I'm just a mouthpiece. And when well, you talk about, there's sort of three moods of poetry, right? There's the, there's the lyric of anticipation, there's a lyric of consummation, and there's the lyric of lamentation, right? And the way that I teach this is with the kids, it's like, it's like Christmas morning, right? You know, and I remember as a kid when the, you know, the, the Sears Roebuck catalog came out, you know, sometime, you know, in November, and you'd like look through that thing and you'd mark it up and whatever, it's all about it, I can't wait, this is going to be amazing. And advent starts because thanksgiving's now over and like you said man christmas morning is going to be the best right and then you get to you know the the christmas eve night and it's christmas eve he's like you go to this family party and this open house oh man this thing is taking forever i just want to go to bed because i want to wake up right and then and then you know so all of that anticipation that's real and boy it's so exciting right and then you wake up and you get your parents downstairs and boom you know you rifle through all the presents and it's like this sheer euphoria of consummation and everybody knows what it's like to feel, you know, it's like 1130, 130, you know, it, it kind of sad, you know, it's over, you know, the, the, the lament it starts sector. going down. down Absolutely. Down, right. Down. You know, and, and, then, and then, man, you know, you're just like downright depressed, you know, and you sort of, I, and <laughs> do, you feel like you a, know you feel the, like a um, piece of garbage because it's like, you know, it's over, but you got what you wanted and, and yet you still don't, you're kind of sad. You ever hear the Gartner hype cycle? You ever no, seen that? No, 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 no. So uh, folks out there can look it up. But I, I find that this is the case, like every new thing in my life. So yeah. there's an initial, and you can think of this as like the stock market bubble yeah. uh, for the yeah. dot-com obsession in around 2000, is there's this initial wave. It's it's called the peak of inflated expectations. Mm. Any new thing, mm -hmm. and, and this applies individually. And then the Gartner hype cycle is intended to apply to broad things like the hype of a new product or a company yep. or something like that. Of course. I, but I, this, yeah. I, I, I think it's completely applicable at an individual level because yeah. you start a new thing, right? I start on Chad's channel, but more importantly, I have a new friend in Chad. I'm like, yeah, things are awesome. And then yeah, Chad yeah. really ticks me off. That Boom. hasn't happened yet. It will happen. It will. And that, that's yeah. really the true test of a friendship is you have your first yeah. argument and away you go. Yeah. But anyway, so you have the, the, the top of the, the cycle, top of the wave. And then so this was around 2000, year 2000, Amazon, Priceline, all these companies worth crazy amounts of money. Tulip Mania. And then, yeah, and then, Tulip Mania, yeah, exactly. And yeah, Tulip Mania, same thing. And then yeah. it, it, and then you go into the, the trough of disillusionment is what yeah. it's called. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Great Depression. And then you slowly kind of come out of it in, in the hype cycle. But the more I found that I'm able to identify 
where I am in that cycle in various aspects of my life, then I know like, oh, in Bible study that let's say I'm doing, if I'm like in the trough, it's like, mm. no, 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 this is normal. Like I'm, mm. I'm, I just need to keep going. And that's the routine, right? That's the daily practice that Chad's always talking about. It's like, how do I, the daily practice or like the weekly mass or whatever it is, the whole point of that is so that when the trough of disillusionment happens, which inevitably it happens, that we have a plan to get out of it. <laughs> whatever it is yeah right and, and and so so you'll find you know you know with 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 poems you know is that we we have a ton uh, of lyrics of lament and we have a ton of lyrics of anticipation but we have like a really like small sliver of lyrics of consummation and i just think that's interesting just from a, a human psyche standpoint because it's really hard to be in the present right and, 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 you know, it's really hard to capture the feeling of a flow state, yet we all understand what a flow state is, right? And so, um, so, so I, I think poetry can teach us that, you know, that, 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 that being able to kind of recognize, you know, the mood or whatnot. And so to your point, um, I didn't know I thought this about the parable until you 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 you, you poked me here a little bit. Um, I colonized the. Camp. Yeah, you worked. You worked. It worked. But it really is is reframed it for me. Um, you know, because I just got finished teaching Milton's Paradise Lost to the kids, and you know, uh, what what one of the things that the kids are always um, surprised about is that in the garden, like they have they have work, right? It's not just like sipping mai tais and on 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 the beach in Cabo, right? It's like they had. You know, their, their work with, and, and of course, you know, the, the, the embedded wisdom of that they're gardeners, of course, they're gardeners, right? Because they recognize that they didn't, they don't create the flower, they don't create the tomato or what have you, right? But they are there to cooperate and work with what has been given to them. So of course, the, 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 the primary way we are to understand our human being is that we are gardeners in this thing that we have received. And of course, a good gardener recognizes that, you know, you can, you can ramp up production in a garden and shred and shred the you know the, the soil or or you know whatever you know and th there's this sort of this cooperation with creation in order to you know yield proper fruit and so 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 i think all of that is true and so maybe when, what we are doing here is to try to recalibrate the garden right that that we can't afford to you know obsess about you know, um, what kind of handle our spade is going to um, have attached to it, right? That, 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 that for so much of, 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 of the banter has been of like, well, you know, I think that it should be rubber, or I think it should be metal, or I think it should be corrugated, but, you know, whatever, you know, and you could really, and, you know, hey, like, you ask me what I care, well, I prefer this kind of handle, you like that kind of handle, well, I'm right, you're, you know, so you can sort of see how these things degenerate into, you know, kind of absurdities, but, but but maybe that's missing the point, right? I think that's where we are. We find ourselves in this this flotilla, right? We find ourselves as like, can we like care about something bigger? You know? Yeah. Rather, and also like the so I, I, a lot of the frame that I see things through is um, so I, I look at let's say <clears throat> what where where does where does my malady sit? Mm, mm. And it's mm. it's in the selfishness and self centeredness, mm. and in like that, like a really a really useful thing that I learned a while ago was um, because I was like going to all these different meetings and I was trying to find just the right meeting for me, like sure. the right AA meeting or whatever. And maybe yeah. maybe you guys can map this to whatever you know whatever you like, but. Oh, yeah, literally everything, Chad. I mean, it could be, you know, I'm looking for the right golf course. I'm looking for, you know, the right church, you know, the right pastor. I mean, look, this is this is absolutely, you'd be shocked. Kale, I'm sure you've heard this, but we don't have Roman Catholics around here. We have Roman Catholics. Right, exactly. Right. right? You know, we're all looking for like the, the, the Xanadu Parish, right? The Unicorn Parish. Right? Yeah, well, so go ahead. You totally get it. Was like, what I learned was that there wasn't going to be a meeting on the planet that was going to give me what I was looking for. <laughs> You know, right, like because right, there's right. not enough of it, right? Right. And even I don't know what that is. And like the second I have what I think I want, the shine wears off very quickly. Yeah. And so, like somebody, an old timer asked me, he said, "Chad, what do you think an AA meeting is?" I said, mm -hmm. "Well, it's a place where I go to get well." He mm -hmm. says, "No, it's not." Mm -hmm. I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "It's a place where you go to give. That's it." 
Mm. That's the whole purpose of it. You know, and, and like, because in that mode, there's never enough of what you can give. Man, that's so true. God, that, that, so that, that, that hits. You just never run out of it. Yeah. It's like if you can start to take these little actions that reframe how you kind of see the world that you're in, you start to see, oh, yeah, selfishness and self-centered. That, we think, is the root of all our troubles. Driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-fear, self-pity. We step on the toes of our fellows, and they retaliate seemingly without provocation. Like, like that's, mm. like, the root of me. And so, like, mm. if my whole uh, – and, and I've come to see, like, much of, much of the world's problems that I see are rooted in selfishness and self-centeredness. And we don't like to say that because that's, like, a pejorative. It's like, I'm not selfish. It's like – Come on, dude. Just look at how we're wired. Yeah, yeah. We're selfish. Well, well, and 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 something I've been thinking about along those lines, Chad, is that you know the whole world as it is currently constructed and operates is geared towards separating me from you and me from Neil and Neil from me. And I mean, the whole thing is is geared in that direction, right? And so, and 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 now you have uh, you know the sort of the spirit of it uh, in concert with that pulling and rending apart. And, you know, but, but the good news, right, to me is that we, it doesn't have to, right? you know, um, that, that, that we can actually um, find ways to connect. I mean, look at the three of us. We're in, you know, three, you know, quadrants of, of the country, you know, Neil South, I'm East, you're upper Midwest, North, right? It's like, it's like, we are far away, yet here we are, you know, generating fellowship that, is great for you, for the three of us. At least it is for me. I, yeah. you know, I don't know how you all feel, but 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 I also know, interestingly enough, that that people are going to watch this. That's wild, mm -hmm. right? That, that you know that, that that they're already part of this conversation, and I can't feel them or sense them or smell them or you know see them, but I know because I know this is the way this thing works. Is that you know the three of us are going to get notes from a couple of people saying, "Man, really enjoyed your conversation. It really helped me X with Y or, or what have you." And like, man. That's ridiculous and amazing and cool and, and a blessing, like actually a blessing. Yeah, and it's not just willy nilly farting around. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There yeah. is there, that, which I think yeah. is very vital. Like we yeah. need some of that. Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's yeah. far more than that. This isn't just like, like sometimes I wonder what the other because I'll be on YouTube and I see like similar setups and channels and. Other channels and flotillas I have known nothing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder what those people are talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they think? Do they have the sense that I have where this is actually very serious? Very. Th this is this is deep. This is well, deep. We we don't we don't know what we're touching into right here right now. And what I mean by that is like, mm. when when did the novel come about as a art form, Kale? I think it, it's only about 250, 300 yeah, exactly. years old, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so when when the first novelists were coming out, was it um, was it something that was understood like, oh, this is going to be the future of story for the next 250 years? Right. Or I, I don't think so. And and no. so what we're doing in this space here, it's just been around for five years, if that, yeah. you know, 10 years. And yeah. we have no idea what this will be in 10, 20, 30 years. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's perils to that. Obviously, there's huge perils. Of but we don't, um, we're not like you know, we're yeah. not like, oh man, we're gonna we're gonna go out there, and we're gonna change the, we're gonna change the world. I'm gonna do this. We're gonna. It's not that. Any, it's like no, it's it's this. It is a fellowship. It's a deep fellowship, and mm -hmm. it's it's it can't be. I well, love I the love humbleness of it. Touched exactly like. Uh, I, 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 I have a difficulty trying to lay out exactly what I mean with that, but it's like the, the guys that stumbled over a solution to alcoholism, which also never really existed until like 90 years ago, they accidentally tripped over the solution and it happened to be God. Yeah. <laughs> it's prophetic, right? I mean, I, I, you know, that, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah, we, you know, we, we actually vastly underestimate the, destruction historical destruction of alcohol like you know you, you look at average alcohol consumptions by you know whatever like 25 year increments or what have you man like they drink a lot like a lot you know and it, well, was, it, was, and, it, it killed bacteria i mean the yeah. water yeah, yeah that's, that's part true. of it. 
yeah, 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 yeah. yeah right. That, that's the, fair. But we're talking about we're talking about booze, right? Cooler, right. I'm like I'm not against alcohol. Right, right, right. Which is interesting. But so like the 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 point is for thousands of years since man's crushed grapes, there's been there's a, a small percentage of people right. who are just like me, chronic alcoholics, who desperately wanted to stop but found they couldn't. And then ninety years ago, a couple of drunks accidentally tripped over a solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like and, and then and like today, I mean, I and and after three years of trying to to help people, you know how many people they found stayed sober? About forty, and they were like. It was like discovering a new continent. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why the book was written. And that's mm-hmm. and then later, the you know, the meetings happened. But, you know, like, and today I'm in a, I can walk into a meeting. There's 250 people there and half of us don't give a shit that the meeting exists. Like, it's like, what? The alcoholic hasn't changed. He's still the same. So, yeah. and, and so I guess, sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to, um, to, to you're proclaiming a- you're proclaiming the gospel i mean th- that's genuine no but yeah you really are you really are chad I, I think that's important yeah you, you're because look look we're, we're very comfortable thinking and talking out loud about patterns right but what, what what you're saying here is really profound and it is you know the gospel is the gospel and the gospel has been the gospel since jesus was walking around doing his thing right and and yet the fact that a a doesn't get discovered until you know you know less than a hundred years ago um and what it discovered was the most ancient pattern of all is remarkable and i think telling and illuminative of why um it works um and how dim we can remain even after we you know we thought we knew the gospel well man there's another element uh, aspect fractal of the gospel that we um, needed to discover. And it took us, you know, almost 2000 years to do it. Yeah. And and I think that's telling. And so I think about this as it relates to what Jordan Hall is mentioning here about, uh, you know, about no man left behind. We, we call each other home, you know, that, that attitude. So like, you know, you have altitude, which is, I think, you know, Christ centric in my, for me, it's God centric. That's the altitude, but an attitude is is out here mm. it's with my fellows, and that's very important. I need both, and um, and so when he mentions that, I wonder, and I've often wondered this, even back before I was Christian, I would go to churches and stuff, and I'd go there just to listen. And I'd be wondering, what are these guys doing from Sunday to Sunday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like, and at that time, it was more of a critique, and now today, especially you know. Especially the church I'm in now, it's 100 and, uh, 175 years old. It's uh, very tied to its community. And uh, 70% of them are in their 70s and getting older. Yeah. And that's going to come quick. Like the reality of that situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. You know, how, how can I better um, not, not only be uh, somebody who is trying to because I don't like prophesizing. I don't I don't think it works personally, but how can I better be a brother in Christ even to those who don't know I'm doing that and to those who are who will not become Christian? How can I better be a, a disciple, right? Even to those who don't know I'm discipling. And that's like that's what I think you're doing in some so, sense, right? You're so like, what, yeah, what sorry. comes to my mind, and Kale, feel free to riff on this, but what comes to my mind is the road to Emmaus. Mm-hmm. They're walking in the wrong direction. And he's like, mm-hmm. yeah, tell me about it. Like, oh, this guy, you know. <laughs> but look, look at the vanishingly small opportunity moment there. I mean, it's like it's two guys who were like down for it, right? And they were in Jerusalem and they were, man, they were part of that rocket ride. And, you know, they're not the inner ring guys. They're not you know, the, the 12 apostles, they're not even like, you know, the, the sort of the next level disciples they're, 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 you know, and they're like, they're walking away. Like what an opportunity, you know, it's so small. It's like, it's, it's, it's Jesus and two dudes. Like what, you know, <laughs> I, I I'm always humbled by the microscopic origin point of this faith that 
we share and has built civilizations and has lost civilizations and will rekindle civilizations. It's like 12 dudes and a couple of hangers on, like just bonkers. And like that, that's wonderful. Right? So, you know, and, and so there's no internet, there's no book, like there's nothing like they're, they're 12 dudes who witness, you know, along with, you know, let's call them another 20 people, women and, 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 and other folks. And they witnessed the resurrected Christ, this person that they knew intimately. And then from that, like, let's call it max 30 people. That, <laughs> you know, I mean, at any point they could have gotten round up and killed. And, you know, so, so anyway, so those opportunities are just so mind blog, mind boggling. So, so, so Chad, you, you're here in this dying church, right? And, and 70% of the congregation is 70 and older. And you know, in your lifetime, you are gonna see that dwindle to you, okay? Now, from the world perspective, that's a complete catastrophe. That, that, that's, that's not, no, can't happen. But you, you know, you, you are you, and like you hold that, right? And however imperfect that you have, you know, found yourself in this place in which, you know, you are a bridge, you know, you're a, a, a sort of a bearer um, of what? I, I don't know. Wisdom? Experience? You know, you you hold them in some fascinating way. And like, you're going to carry, you know, you're not going to die tomorrow, God willing, right? You know, so so sometimes it's one person, you know, it's like some Shakespeare plays, it's like one person lives to tell the tale you know in moby dick the entire pequod you know goes under and everybody dies except for two folks at the very end you know it's like you just need one person to keep that line going and and i and obviously there are more than one right and and i don't know i i i, I don't despair over those kinds of things in quite yeah. the same way because you are um an incarnate being, you know, it, it comes to you and look what you're doing. Right. I mean, like both with your work with a, and these things that we do online and like now it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it already hasn't died, Chad. It already hasn't died because you have taken what you have received and you are spreading it. You know, you were, you were casting seed. And, um, so we already won. Like, right. You I are mean, like, you are you way more won. punk rock than I thought, Kale. You are way more punk rock. I what do you it. mean? The, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, everything's against us. We're gonna win anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember one time one of my friends said that his he had an Irish grandmother or something, and it's like every Irish grandmother like thinks everything's always going to uh, going to hell, but in the end it'll be fine. And I, <laughs> I, I really, I think that like that's that's me. You know, it's like. Everything's a catastrophe. I mean, just look around. You, you know, I don't have special eyes to see. You can all see it too. Just some people like to admit it and some people don't. But I really do believe in the end it's going to be great. That's hilarious. Neil and I were just talking about that this morning. And you were saying like, talking about, because uh, like I've said for a while and people have, I don't know that if, I've gotten some pushback on it. They think I'm being really negative, but I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't see us like us, society as yeah. a whole, yeah. being able to pull itself up from a swan dive that it's got itself in yeah. Yeah. and just change its mind and do that. Like that doesn't, that, that I don't think that's possible because we're so wrapped up in self. And like, like, and the reason why, uh, like another model, obviously that I can kind of lay this over is like alcoholics don't just wake up one day and say, you know, I think I'm just going to quit and be done. You know, it's like, no, they, they continue down. Like, it's like, hmm, uh, spiritual help or alcoholic death. Yeah. Tell me how bad the alcoholic death yeah. is. Can we, can we can we talk a little bit more on that? I want some details. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. Tell me how bad that is. It's like, well, I mean, that's why I think, like, the whatever the Kairos moment seems to be mm -hmm. and what it's coming to, it, like, uh, it's I'm right there with Peugeot and he says, I think it's just going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And like, that could be daunting, but you know, like, um, 
there's this there's this line in, in the in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous that says, uh, "Remember, alcohol is cunning, baffling, and powerful. Cunning, Without baffling, and powerful. there okay. is too much for us. But there is one who has all power, and that one is God. May you find him now." And one day I was reading that, yeah. and it said, "Alcohol is cunning, baffling, and powerful. But there is one who has all power. Yeah. That one is God." And I thought, "Holy shit." God had the power of alcohol and he used it to bring me to my knees, to bring me to him. So, so Chad, I don't know if you knew this, but what are the three words? Cunning, baffling, powerful. I okay. got a feeling where Kale's going here. So, so, so when Adam and Eve eat the fruit, um, that, that Satan in the serpent convinces first Eve and then, and then Adam to eat. The way that they two things popped in my head. Number one, we call it an apple because of Milton, right? It, prior to that, there, there was there there were different there were different depictions of it, but it really kind of solidified into an apple um, through Milton. And for the uh, English in the seventeenth seventeenth century, alcohol, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ap uh, apples were used primarily for hard for hard alcohol. It's a hard cider was like was 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 a big thing. So it was always associated with kind of like euphoric, a, a specifically euphoric drunk uh, high, right? And so that so that's number one. N number two, when they eat the fruit, they describe it. Milton describes it as if Eve has sort of tasted the way that an alcoholic would describe having a drink after a dry spell, right? Mm. It's just like it's like immediately yeah right 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 and it, it, it's 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 immediate right so you know even even in that 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 pattern right it's you know cunning you know powerful um baffling that 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 is that is the 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 plan of cunning and guile by the by, by satan himself right by the dissembler is is to be those things and to embody those three things and so i think it makes perfect sense it's total sense yeah but i i also as i said i mean i if 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 alcohol is powerful and god has all power that means he had the power of alcohol yeah and though yeah. he might have used it or you know the the accuser might have used it for for bad god used it for good yeah and i see this all the time like i've seen somebody look as yellow as homer simpson <laughs> 30 years old, mm. who actively tried to drink himself to death, be, you know, come to, come to, uh, <clears throat> come to a, a type of bottom and, and desperately did something else about it. And, and he's still sober today. And he, he gives himself to service to others and seeking God. And, mm. and that's why I don't think like a uh, society as we're in now is like, I mean, why would we stop acting the way we do? I like guess everything is so like cunning, baffling, and powerful. Yeah. It's yeah. it's amazing well, until yeah, it's question. not. <laughs> After every Mar Mardi Gras period, <clears throat> and we're in a Mardi Gras period right now, whether we like it or not, we're right. in a Mardi Gras period. But right. after every Mardi Gras period, there's always a Lent. And really the question is, will it be forced upon us or, mm. you know, Embraced. take it upon our hearts? Yeah. 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 No, uh, that's so right. It's, it's like, uh, one of my favorite awkward expressions, Kale. It's circumcise your hearts, y'all. Yeah, yeah, y'all. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't we don't actually say that down here, but I I remember reading that multiple <laughs> times in the Old Testament. It's like, what the heck does circumcise your heart mean? And and but that's what it means. It means your hearts are hardened. They're not receptive to mm -hmm. correction. They're not receptive to repentance. Yeah, um, it's like the tearing of the clothes, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I'm I'm naked once again before God. Right. And it's necessary, like in a weird, in a weird sort of way, because, you know, and, you know, what, what is the, no one's closer, you know, this is why prisoners have a, a particular grace, right? Because they recognize that they live at the mercy of others all day, every day, right? And so there's a, there's a peculiar insight that that one gets in that that we all need though none of us are going to sort of elect to be um prisoners but but you know but then just like you said neil it's like yet we all are really prisoners to our appetites 
and we don't like to admit those things right and so chad once again like to, to your point the reason why the pattern is so um powerful for you uh is that you see it everywhere and you see it everywhere for for a very real reason you know it's not you like hero worshiping um this thing that got you out of a pit it's that yeah did that too you know but it's that no it's actually it, it's the pattern that all of us need because all of us are degenerate that way right so there neil you know there's a i'm going to make a plug here for the total depravity the uh, primacy of grace yeah yeah <laughs> that's right you know it, it it's um you know it, it, it swirls around the same mystery and I still have it, right? Mm -hmm. I still have the like a draw to the cunning, baffling, and powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I was like five years sober, and I was watching uh, the. It was on Netflix. Uh, it was uh, it was called The Dirt. It was the Motley Crue movie. Okay. And there's yeah. a scene in there where Nikki Six is sitting in the in his closet, and he's you know reaching his bottom. Yeah, right. And, and when he's there, he's got like this pistol. It's just a dark scene, but yeah, I was yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking part of me was saying there's something really attractive about that. Wow. And it, it made me step back and was wow. like it's weird. Like, why is like there'll be there'll be times where um just the weirdest times where like one day I would wake up and I'd think, you know, it'd be a good idea is if I like hitchhiked to California and just was a uh, like a like a like a beach bum drunk like sure. like that thought just passes in and air one out the other it's like yeah. where the, did that come from you know and like this is i have i i've learned to to have um <clears throat> and i'm not i'm not uh, inflating myself here i'm just being honest i've learned to have really great respect for my ability to destroy right. beautiful things like i have to have yeah. really good respect for my ability to fall asleep at the wheel and destroy beautiful and free freely given things in well, this well you better right i mean not just you i mean we we better respect the heck out of that right you know because you know you know one of the one of the you know the sort of jbp isms that I, I i really appreciate is you know he really will talk very frankly about the the burden of your own being you know the, to, to shoulder that you know i i really like when he talks that way because you know we've been lied to you know about that and 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 part of that burden, you know, so you're talking honestly, Chad, you know, part of the burden that you bear is you know that you get the attractiveness to want to just blow it all up. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's a you know, and 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 that's real, you know. And I look as a you know, as as a husband and as a father and as a teacher, man, I really get the desire just to like freaking walk away. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, like walk away, man. You know why am I doing all what what is what is this any what is none of it means anything anyway right which is you sort of the chirping it's the chirping yeah. of the serpent in your ear right and so it, it it colonizes your imagination you start fantasizing about X Y and Z right it's like that's absolutely that's absolutely part of it and so the, the to shoulder the burden of being is to take that up too mm -hmm. right and 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 recognize that part of being a man you know um, is is to recognize that you know you, you know i have monster in me um and um but i also have christ in me um and and again i don't want to be sort of too pat or new agey about it but 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 there's a war there um and and all of us have to admit that um but but that doesn't go away i think that as you point out like that that doesn't go away you have right. to you have to tame that you well, that's that. I think it's a bad idea to rest on the idea of gratitude as mere thought. Mm. Like gratitude mm. is action. It's mm. you know, it's it's a lot. It's like love is a verb. Same with it's gratitude. like it's like faith is what you do. Yes, well, it, it, it's kind of like you you can start gratitude through prayer. In that you know, mm. prayer is like that initial step of choosing gratitude. You could say, and then to the what Saint Paul, you pray without ceasing. It's like. Mm. Am I praying right now while I'm talking? Yeah, 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 Actually, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, I'm yeah. praying while I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm aimed at the appropriate thing, let's right. say we're aligning ourselves and resonating with, um, you know, deep, deep music. Um, well, yeah, that's the Lord's Prayer, right? Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've wanted to talk about the Lord's Prayer for a long time with people because 
like we it's just so it's one of those things where it's so you hear it so often i don't know how much we actually think about it but like the idea totally. that, that there is no i in the lord's prayer like mm. like the whole thing in my my opinion is it has nothing to do exactly with me it has to do with with us so like like it's not it, it there's no power our us we, yes. we like it's like it, it always already is communal even when i'm saying it alone in my room yes that's right which i believe all, all prayer should be exact i mean that's my personal opinion mm. like that's why i find it difficult if i'm praying for others even i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna pray for i just say i'll just and if i'm doing like you know uh, what what do they call that where you're just saying a prayer off the top of your extemporaneous head. prayer yeah like um I'll, uh if i include people's names i just say their names i don't yeah, know what yeah, i'm yeah. saying like i don't know man but and that's right I, though. that's right that, that that instinct is absolutely right it's invocation of the person through name it's powerful yeah and, and it's our birthright as as sons of adam right we name mm. things so about naming real quick mm. so the parable where they're surrounding the woman the sinner they're mm. going to stone her and then Jesus begins writing in the sand. Love that. And okay, so here's why I think I'm right about this. It says they 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 leave from oldest to youngest. They leave from oldest to youngest. In order. In I, order. In order. I think he's writing their names because there's oh. nothing there's nothing that scares someone more than someone you don't yeah. know who says you're a Kale Zel Zeldon. Yeah. I know who you are. Yeah. And the oldest. The closest to judgment, the yeah. closest to, in some ways. Oh, that's great! I, I really like that. Christ. And of course, yeah. he's Christ, so he knows your name, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. But, but think because one of the topics I wanted to discuss with with Chad, we don't have to discuss this. I wanted to discuss this with Luke, but it's like it's like the fear that keeps people from participating, let's say, in this community or not a community mm -hmm. that we have, right? Mm -hmm. And it's that that it, it's that named thing. It's that like, oh, it's me. Like I'm putting myself out there and then it's to the end of time it's me and all of my <laughs> nakedness to the you know that's terrifying but but the question is so i've said this before like i'm more terrified of god <laughs> than i am of, yeah. of people yeah. like i'm yeah. like anyway yeah but no I, don't get me I, wrong but like my, my my love of god is greater thanks yeah, be to god yeah, but like yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah i think that's essentially what the whole space is about this channel and all this shit is not has nothing to do really with me or or with you guys this has to do with <coughs> um excuse me well well chad that's chad, why it's nameless nameless is in the title i mean right right that that's that's the the the, the flip right you, you you've you flipped it you you've invoked it by flipping it right that's the yeah, so it has to do with like maybe somebody is stumbling around in the wilderness in the desert and trips over something and in that moment maybe they find a beginning to something different that's the whole point and we get the joy of doing silly shit along the way right right, right which is right. very fun and and like i've had some of the most uh incredible conversations you know that flow state you're talking about if you're a musician you'll know like what it's like to be in a pocket like mm -hmm. that feeling is just so perfect mm -hmm. like i've had that in conversations with people mm -hmm. over on the discord one of the first times that ever happened it was luke and i Luke Thompson and I were talking in the Discord, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah, whoa, like, and, and I've, I've experienced that a lot of that in person, like, um, doing like a fifth step with somebody and things like that. And mm -hmm. it's, it's powerful. This yeah. is, you know, this, like, this, I, this idea, this, these things that we, these incredible gifts that are just the most unlikely of things that could ever happen, like being able to speak and hear. And understand words that we're sharing is is incredible, and and it, these are the most in, incredible miracles, and we they're just constantly flowing out of our mouths all the time, and we don't even think about how incredible it is. Yeah, and that's why we're doing. That's why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. I wanted mm -hmm. to be at the table, and that's why I did this channel. It's just for fun, you know, and and the the great joy of like, like when you hear something that somebody else shares it's like oh my god thank and like I, I don't know i can't recite half the shit i hear on this this uh 
these spaces. You know, I can't like like if you were giving me a quiz on it, I'd fail. But sure. I know when I hear it, I'm hearing it, and, and like the more I the more I participate, the more I'm able to actually gain the confidence, so I can actually go out because I'm awkward, man. Like I I feel awkward around people, and and but this helps me, so I can actually go and have a conversation with the customers at work. Yeah. Just be okay with them. Yeah. You know, and that's, this is all great gifts. So I don't know how much we got into the whole thing with, with, with uh, Jordan here, but maybe we did. I mean, so how can we better do what he's saying? This idea, like specifically the no, the no man left behind and helping call each other home. Like how do we, how do we really do that? Well, I, I think we need to stop being obsessed with scale. Um, mm. You know, I think I think we are we are we live in a world where you can win World War II by you know ramping up the war machine, and so all the factories in Detroit are doing this, and all the people over here are doing that, and this is massive scale that is mind boggling, right? Mm. But but that's why I fixate on the road to Emmaus. Like the road to Emmaus is like one Jesus and two dudes. And it's it's at that level, it's at that radical level that that we we live this thing out, you know. So when when Jordan seemed to claim or answer to John as like this is an answer to the meta crisis, is that we experience the meta crisis imaginatively as meta, but 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 individually as acute, um, and and so you know it's deeply helpful to me to know that other people are going through a meaning crisis. Um, it is truly, you know, Mm -hmm. but, but we get to work out that meaning crisis, you know, one at a time, you know, here, here at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's, there's a secondary scale to it, but, you know, we are paying attention to each other right now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so, that that that's where discipleship happens right i mean you know if you think you know if, if, if you know when you think about like how did the gospel just like actually spread you know and we have a couple of these sort of these spectacular moments where you know 300 you know joined after hearing you know peter speak you know uh, on, on the day of pentecost and all those kinds of things right but I personally like legion but yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Well, 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 but but then, but you know, you have to imagine then that like there would be these connections. You're like, okay, like there's an after moment where you know, like you get yeah. you get inducted in, you know, one at a time, right? You know, and and so so you know, and then you know, Peter and Paul, they like walk around and talk to people, and you know, so it, it's a maybe maybe the meta crisis is in some sense thinking that we can attack it in a meta way and not in an individual personal person to person way. I love this so much. Like mm. you have no idea, Kale, how much I love this mm. in so many ways. Uh, the, the, the fetish of quantity. Yeah. The, yeah. It's like number of likes, number of mm. subscribers, how, how rich my life is, is how many friends I have, mm. like uh, uh, number of comments, like the quanti the quantity, uh, I, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I hate it. I hate it. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and when when I came out of the lurk, and I didn't even realize I was doing this, but as I was realizing that I was doing this, I started to make it conscious because I think what you're pointing to is the answer. I'm I'm I really do think this is the answer. Where I conscious, aside from me, I don't think anyone else in the corner has stated this outright, and this might be the third third time I'm stating it, which is I came out of the lurk to make friendships Hmm. with individual people, with people that I saw that I'm like, I think I could be really good friends with this person. Yeah, 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 totally. And I I said that to Chad. I'm like, I think we would get along really well. And a few other people. And it's like, it's everybody in the corner is like, so welcoming, so egalitarian, come on in. And and that's awesome. And and genuinely speaking, I'm like that. But I can't control like who I find more interesting or who I really Mm -hmm. like. And I can't, Mm -hmm. I can't control that. And, and it's like, Christ, Christ has favorites and it's almost like he gave us permission. What? No, yeah, no, what? seriously. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. like Christ, I, I love this about it. it's it's like one of these things we don't like to admit that that it's like, oh, he only takes three of them up on the mountain, right? Yeah. He has a be- he has a beloved disciple. He has yeah. a beloved disciple. Right. Right. And it's like, 
that gives me permission in my life to have a best friend. It gives me permission to have a hierarchy of attention almost Mm -hmm. be like, I'm going to pay the most attention to these people because like, yeah, like I, I, it's, it's love, but it's, it's like, I'm not pretending to be this egalitarian person that I I can't be. I have a favorite, I have my wife, I have my daughter. Like, you know what I I mean? mean, You know, who am I Lord that you would come into my house? Yeah. You're like, what, what, you know, you know, that, that, that to me, you know, has to be it, you know, that, and that to me, th- those are the parts of the gospel that are just so resonant to me. Like this is, this is so. And, and so true. radical, right? If yeah. you're trying to win people and it's like, it's like, what? Like, <laughs> Well, when, when he did the thing with, with the Legion guy, I think this is what's, what hooked me. This is where my whole conversion happened mm-hmm. is after he, you know, he heals him. Uh, this dude, this nameless dude walks up to, to Christ as he's about to leave and he says, can I go with you? And Christ is like, no, no. Why don't you stay here and help your friends and tell them what the Lord did Mm -hmm. like that bang. I'm like, Oh yeah. There's a, there's a great sequence in, um, a man for all seasons, the story of um, Thomas More, And, um, he's got this hanger on, his name is um, Richard, and Richard is really after Thomas to get him a position at court, right, because he's ambitious. And Thomas is sort of humoring him, and he sort of says at one point, no, I think you should you should, you should, you should be a teacher. And he didn't want to be a teacher because he doesn't want to be a nobody, right? And Moore's like, no, no I, really, I really think you should, you should be a teacher. And at first you're sort of watching this thing unfold. You're like, dude, come on, Thomas, like do the man a solid. Like, you know, you know, people like, well, you know, and then you realize, um, and he becomes, he becomes the sort of the, the Judas figure, the, 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 the villain. Um, in the end, he, he sells Thomas Moore out. And, and you realize that, 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 that Thomas Moore wasn't being arbitrary. He was being very specific. And he was looking at Richie Rich, Richard Rich was his name. He was looking at Richard Rich right in the face and saying, no, you must be a teacher you must not be a courtier because when you go to court you will lose your soul right and and that that, like talk about a kind of radical individually you know you know more saw him right but he didn't want he didn't want it you know so i think a pvk in that way yeah absolutely me too so when i because um you know he he talks about He's been in that role before where he has to administrate and manage and, yeah. and govern the whole thing. And he knows where it ends. I, I, I saw in my company once I was in that sort of role as, where I was managing about eight to 10 people and I was doing okay. And I thought I was doing okay. And I was ha- high status, you know, bees yeah, knees. Yeah, right, right. And, um, and then one of the most experienced people on the team, even more experienced than me, but he was in a technical role. He was leaving the company and because he was leaving the company, he felt, like he could speak frankly to me and he yeah, sat yeah, down yeah, with yeah. me and it was honestly, it was some in a hit, you know, feedback's right. When you know, it's coming from a place of love and it, it hurts, it hurts. And, yeah, and, it's, yeah. and it hurts. And when, when he spoke to me, he's like, I don't think this is the role for you. Like I, I don't, I, and I, I don't even remember the specifics of what he said, but it was a place of like genuine care. And it was just his, and I knew it was honest because he didn't have anything to gain, like only things to lose by telling me this an uncomfortable right, right. conversation. So, yeah. So and, I was just going to say, so this yeah. is exactly, so, you know, Chad, you know, you, you're, you sort of think about your legacy and you think about like your work, you know, part of it for me is I want to be the man who can tell, you know, the young buck, you know, no or yes or, or or whatever right you know that 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 you know so my prayer then is sort of lord you know make me the man who is able to say the true thing in charity to someone who needs it because like your kingdom depends upon it right and so but like, it has you know, like, to come from that place of love it that's has, right the that's love right. has to be there yeah, that's right right not not in and, and it's it's very easy to, to sort of right to sort of fall off that but i think that like, think of the gift that that was to you, Neil. I would imagine that was um, tremendously um, informative for you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Is that, is that that's a a moment of mercy too, mm. to yes. be honest with somebody like that? Yeah, you know, right. I mean, this father, is, it, 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 sometimes yeah. it's a severe mercy, right? You know. Mm-hmm. 
that's, my father yeah. told me the uh, the single the single most important thing you can do as a manager uh, is that the people who are reporting to you, it is your absolute duty that they know precisely how they're doing on a regular basis, yeah. on a regular recurring basis that they know how they're doing. There should never be any surprises in any job unless it's something that's so obscene. But if it's yeah, so obscene, yeah, yeah. then then like it's not a surprise because, you know, yeah. it's yeah. Um, and, and, but so many times it's like, oh, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. And then, and then you're not, you know, yeah, 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 no, I yeah, agree. yeah, I agree. It's hard. It's hard to do. Right. Cause you, nobody wants to be mean except those people who do want to be mean and you already know those people. Right. So it's, <laughs> you know, well, well, what do you guys think? Do you guys think we should uh, wrap it up and do another one some other time maybe? Oh yeah. This has been fun. I, I probably should land, land the plane soon. I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting, uh, desperate texts from my kids like hey dad like how you doing over there like just fine be, be right yeah. around the block right around the block yeah thank you so much kale and and neil for spending oh, my goodness today awesome. and I, kale, it's, a pleasure, still... it's a pleasure meeting you and yeah no it's I, been great I, in, I, in person I've, thing. I've, I've, yeah I've, I've seen a lot of you i've lurked and sometimes i could be snarky and i've lost more friends due to my mouth uh <laughs> over over my life and and i am getting better and i hope the yeah but i um no, thank you. And it was, it was really was a pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. Mm -mm. So I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, well, um, thank you for responding to the email. And, uh, and I think we, we went, we, we got somewhere. So that was good. Yeah. So, uh, the, the time, the time was ripe. It was, it was the Kairos time, right? That's the, for not sure. too soon, not too late. So it was perfect. Sure. We'll stick around you two real quick before I'll, and I'll pause the recording, but, uh, say, say bye, everybody. Arrivederci. Hasta luego. The Friday Morning Fragment. Wow. DL for now. Oh, oh, hello there. Well, I'm Tom Lukeson, and this here cool cat right here, well, you know who he is, of course. Yeah, this is a quick public service announcement that the Friday Morning Fragments, it's not just for us. That's right, y'all. You see, this here fragments, they're intended for any and all whole body persons. Not just me, not just this guy, but anybody. If you got a conversation, if you're in this little corner, I don't know what corner that is, a little cornish, but, you know, yeah, occasionally this guy gets, no, no, the final pitch, y'all, the final pitch is if you have any conversation that you want to see here on the nameless, the one and only nameless, then you just got to send it to the email address is right here. It's chadthealcoholic at gmail.com. And if you want to see yourself branded appropriately, you best be doing it. You got any follow Friday morning, soon. Friday morning nameless where it's at. Now that's all now. Y'all stay holy. Be able to create something that normally happens in the sun on an island in the Pacific, or to be able to rewrite a cell the way Craig Venter did you know, with synthetic biology. We are now gods, but for the wisdom. The world's most serious human beings should be working on the twin nuclei problem. What do we do with new godlike powers given our history of conflict, our history of envy, our history of madness? We should definitely try it. Everybody believes that should work on that problem. Well, it's, it's the Moses. It's the Moses thing. It's time to go. It's time to leave. This place is over. We get off the planet. I, yeah, I, I, I freak people out when I say that, but like, look at your world. Everybody who has a possible plan to avoid what is coming, if we don't have one, should work on the plan that he, she, things best.
Now this is the plan. Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> Enough! Enough! Just go to the church. Guys, guys, you, I, I can't hear the same story any more times of like, I tried to go to church, but it, it was too hard. Enough! You sit in the seat and you listen, okay? <laughs> Enough! 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 Um. Just go to the church. <laughs> Enough! Enough! Like, enough. Enough. Um. Just go to the church. Enough. Enough. Um. I'm tired of hearing your excuses. Hey, oh, man. You know, enough. Enough, folks. Um. Enough. Okay, put your big boy pants on. Enough, folks! We're done! We're done pretending we don't know how to give the pill to the dog! Right, right. But they're much simpler than we ever imagined. It's not that hard. Guys, 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 we need you. High in openness, high in creativity, disagreeable people, you also need to be in the church. <laughs> you put the pill in the peanut butter. You take the pill, you put it in the peanut butter, you give it to your dog. Enough! Should be a meme.